Ladies and gentlemen, I am the CHALL, your Donksterborn journalist, sporting journalist, your Donkster Rovers fan, and the media manager at Sheffield City Football Club. Today is the preview for a game that I am worried about. I'm not going to lie to you guys, I'm really I'm worried about this game. Donkster Rovers against Leighton Orient, top of the league against ninth. Now, before we get started, please do like, comment, and subscribe. The socials are at the bottom of your screen and in the description down below as well. And for now, Let's get into this one, shall we? Now, usually I would do, like, team history and this season. I'd do a bit of team history. I'd do the history on Leighton Orient and stuff like that. To be honest with you, I I don't think it's... Even though Leighton Orient's got a up-and-down history, they've had some great moments, they've had some poor moments. I think the ownership of Francesco Pacchetti is one that I pick out more recently as sort of a, a really down period for the club. You know, that man tried to ruin that club uh, in more ways than one. Staff not being paid, players not being paid, playing kids every week in League 2. It's It was a tough period for the club, but... This particular preview wants to focus on obviously player ratings, uh, sorry, player, uh, the player predictions, the scoreline prediction, but mainly this video is talking about the game itself and the potential implications as to what this could mean, win, draw or lose. Um, first of all, Wellens took a little bit of a swipe. Um, that we didn't really play any football at Hartlepool. And it, to be fair, he's not wrong. He's not wrong. We didn't look like we had a particular style of play against Hartlepool. The second half was better than the first, like I said in the review yesterday. But we didn't look like we had an actual playing style, which, you know, needs to be resolved and needs to be rectified. I expect McSheffrey... I mean... I mean you know, no matter how many people want McSheffrey out, I think we all stay united in the fact that we expect him to be in the dugout tomorrow. I think we all expect that. No matter how many people want him in, no matter how many people want him out, he, he will be in the dugout tomorrow. So, you know, that cancels all of that out. Um, it's just, it just worries me that game. Especially since Orient's come off the defeat to Newport. We've come off the defeat, don't get me wrong. And, you know, don't get me wrong, we could end up winning this game. It wouldn't surprise me if we did win this game. But it also wouldn't surprise me if we got absolutely embarrassed by Latin Orient. It, it, it works either way. It won't be surprised if we got a sort of out of the blue, didn't expect win over Latin Orient. But it also wouldn't surprise me if we got absolutely humiliated by Latin Orient. Because they're coming off a defeat as well. And they're going to want to be up for this. Yes, they've got three players, three key players missing. But... They're still going to want to be up for it. So, if Orient just stick to the way they've been playing, and Orient just stick to their game plan that they're going to come into this game with, then they're going to beat us. Because against Hartlepool, especially the first half, we didn't look like if we had a particular game plan. And, as I said in the review of Hartlepool yesterday, it would just be written in the stars for Richie Wellens to get one up over his successor, Gary McSheffrey. It would just be written in the stars. But where does that leave the manager? Look, don't get me wrong, you know, I, I, I listened to McSheffrey's interview, I listened to the players speak this week as well. You know, and the, the words, the, the, on the lines of it, the words are kind of the same, really. It's like, you know, I've not been able to pick my best 11 out, my Doncaster Rovers best 11 all season because of injuries, which to an extent you can agree with because, of course, we have got, like, it, you know, he, he says, you know, he, he, you know, McSheffrey comes out in the press today and says about how, um, you know, play um, fans, when they put out their best 11, fans, when, when fans put out their best 11 squad, six of those players are unavailable. And it's like, well... Let's think about this, shall we? Miller, Noyal, touch and go. I hope they're starting. I'm predicting they're starting. Anderson, back in full training. Probably going to get some minutes against Barnsley on Tuesday, which should be interesting. Uh, first game against Barnsley in, what, a few, good few years now. So, it's going to be interesting, that one. Um, obviously, Tomlin's retired. Um, uh, Andrew's out short term. Waltman's still resting on the bench. Young is out long term. Oliver's out for six weeks. Taylor's out short term. You know, if, when you see the amount of plays, Anderson, Taylor, Oliver, 
um, Tomlin, if he wasn't retired now, you know, there will be players you'd expect to be in around that first team. Andrews, Younger. Younger would be maybe on the bench at this point. Andrews is probably not going to come back after January anyway. I think he's probably gone anyway. I think we all pretty much know that he's not going to come back. He's going to go back to Birmingham in January and we'll use that loan slot again in the window on January. Um, so I don't think we'll see Andrews again. Um, Hurst, who's not injured thankfully, but he's around that first team. So when you look at the players that are out, or including the couple that are touch and go row as well, then you're looking at about five, five or six that would be a part of that starting eleven or would be a part of that starting squad. So he's not wrong. He isn't wrong at all. But when you start, when you hear things like, you know, we haven't got the best available out, you know, we can't put, I haven't managed to put out my best eleven, you know, all this season for Rovers. I get it and I don't get it. I get it because, you know, there's certain players that work in the way McSheffrey wants to play himself, but hasn't been able to consistently. It's like Oluwu, for example. You know, he he comes back, he gets minutes against Lincoln, and then he comes in for the next game, and you think, oh, we've got him, he's back, he's back, he's back. And then the collision at uh, Rochdale. So, again, just, yeah, just one of those, isn't it? one of those um, like I said we could be up to six weeks while we were out so that's another lengthy spell on the sidelines for Joe and um, you know he's not great at all you know typical isn't it um, players start to pick up loads more injuries at Rovers uh, but no I'm joking um, but um, no I, I, I get it from that standpoint but on the other hand you've still got quality players in that team and it's not just about the players players do take responsibility if there's individual mistakes in the game if there's wrong passes wrong shots wrong uh, accuracies if there's wrong um you know communication with the teammates things that happen on the pitch that's down to the players but the way we're set up, the way we play the ball, that's not all down to the players. That's also down to the manager. That's all down to the, down to the way we are setting up in a team. If we're playing two up front and going for it and utilising the wing play, playing it along the ground, not going route one in the air where we barely win it anyway, that's the best I've seen us play under McSheffrey. The best I've seen us play under McSheffrey. Look at that team goal against Stockport a few weeks back now. Look at that team goal against Stockport. That was the best way I saw us play. Clever build up, a little bit slow, but we built it up and we built it forward. And we, if we were forced to play it back a couple of times, we needed to. But if there was a way to go forward and we pass it back, when there's clear space for someone there forward, that's not the right way to play. You know, only go route one when you can see someone running onto it in the box. Only do the route one stuff when it's absolutely necessary. We can't hoof it up all the time. That's what we did in the first half against Hartlepool. That's what we did for, you know, part of that Hartlepool game, if not most of that Hartlepool game. It didn't feel like we had a clear attacking game plan. When we did have an attacking game plan, we looked good. We had spells. We looked all right. But I'm going to point it to it again from lower league. Look, no team has come out and said we played well consistently. No team has come out and said we played well. In fact, there was a few teams, including Barrow, that came out and said they expected more from us. And you know that Barrow game, which should have been 4 5 6 against Barrow, but we only lost by two, and Barrow said they expected more from us. You know, it's, 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 it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. And I'm seeing people on social media already getting their manager shortlist together. And I'm like, McSheffrey's really starting to lose the confidence of the fans. And I feel for the guy. I really, really do. I want Gary to turn it around. I want Gary and Steve to be the dream team to turn this around. I really, really do. But if we go on a losing streak now for a couple of games, it may not take long before McSheffrey's out the door. And that's not me saying I want him gone. That's me speaking on a results basis and on a on a football basis because you're not given a lot of time in football now if you're on a bad run and we're not putting in performances in and the club wants an instant return to league one 
that won't give you time. They're just going to start again with a brand new manager. And especially with the January window coming up, they will not give that man time. So McSheffrey, this, this is why it's a turning point for different reasons tomorrow. McSheffrey's got to get some confidence back, uh, back on side from that Hartlepool defeat. And again, it wasn't the result, it was the manner of the defeat. But also, you've got to look at the other side of it, and that's what I am doing. That's what I'm earning money on YouTube for, to pay, play devil's advocate. Some people might not like that, but it's just the way I've got to handle this. I've got to play devil's advocate and look at it down the middle. That's all on one side. Look on the other side, though, the bigger picture. And again, people might not like this. People may comment down below and say, I don't like this at all. You're papering over cracks. I'm not. I'm just playing devil's advocate and looking at both sides here. This is the bigger picture. We're ninth. We are, what, about a point or so off fourth? We could go back into the playoffs if we beat Leighton Orient tomorrow. Yes, it's ifs, buts and maybes. But the bigger picture is, with 30-odd games to go, we are still in the top 10. We are where we need to be to stay in touch with the promotion lot. That's where I expect us to be. And to be fair, Clayton put up a really good point. To be ninth in 12 so games with a, basically a brand new team is a decent start. I do want to jump on that point a little bit. Technically... Technically, it is a new team. Technically, it isn't. Some signings have been here since January. Some have been here a year. So, I can get that point. It is a fairly new team where the longest, there's only one or two longest serving players, and one of them had a previous spell before that. You know, the longest serving player is Anderson, and he's been here a good few years now. The next serving player is your Noyles, your Rose, uh, and Close, for example, that have been here, you know, a year or so. And then your next serving players are the January lot, Agar, Clayton, Mitchell, and then you go into the summer, uh, this summer signings, like your Hursts, your Maxwells, your um, Millers, etc., and Molyneux. So, I, from that point, I do get it. It is fairly new. When you look at the balance of it, it is half January signings and last year's summer signings, and half, and, and I'd say maybe the last sort of quarter of it, going on to half of the squad, or the half of the squad, is this season's signings. But, at the same time, last season's signings have had the experience of that relegation, been in a negative mind, a negative mentality, have been on the end of a losing culture, and it's been the losing culture for the last 18 months now, don't forget. Like I said, players like Anderson have been here since Moore. They've been here since McCann. They've been here since Fergie. So, and I don't mean Alex. For those of you who don't know, it's Darren Ferguson, his son. So, you know, it, 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 it's, it's one of those. It's one of those where... And look, I might not be a popular guy on social media if I say it, 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 with what I'm going to say here. But on one side, you need to look at it bigger picture-wise and think, maybe we can't, maybe we can't keep second managers anymore. Maybe we can't keep second managers anymore. Maybe we have to just literally season by season rip the old losing culture out of the squad and build a new winning culture. And it will take time. But unfortunately, like I said, on the other side of it, in football, you do not get time. You need to get instant results. You need to build on that. If you're not getting results, you need to show there's a plan in place to get results and there is still confidence you can get results Otherwise, you will not last very long. It is that simple. I'm surprised Steve Bruce has lasted this long at West Brom at the moment because Steve Bruce, don't get me wrong, is a legendary name. I respect the guy a lot. But unfortunately, he just doesn't work at this at West Brom. He doesn't work at that club. He works at other clubs, but he doesn't work at West Brom. So, and that's, you know, Alex Bruce, don't block me for saying that. But, but you, you get what I mean. Like, certain managers work at certain clubs. Steve Bruce, for me, worked at Hull. It worked at Wigan back in the day. It worked at Birmingham back in the day. But, it, for me, didn't work. He doesn't work at West Brom. He didn't really work at Newcastle much. But, to be fair, half of it, I can't blame Bruce on that. Because look at the owners he was working with for half the time. Or most of the time. So, you know... It's a weird one. It's a weird one. Um, but uh, no, I'm back on Donny Rovers. Like I said, does McSh is McSheffrey the man to work with Rovers? 
again, like I said, you've got to rip the losing culture out. You've got to do it season by season. This is McSheffrey's first full season in charge as a senior manager, at senior level as a manager. So again, I look on that as a bigger picture and think, well, he's still learning on the job. I know, I know the fans don't want to give him the time. I know most fans don't want to give him the time now. I'm willing to be the odd majority, uh, minority and say I'm willing to stick to my stance. Start November, see where we are, build on that. If we're in the top ten, if we're close to the, if we're close to the automatics, then build on that. But we can, we all, we'll, we'll only know that come the end of this month. We've got a good few games rest of this month. Like in Orient, we've got Stevenage to come. We've got Carlisle. Got crew. Um, we've got we've got a few opponents coming up, so it's one of those. It's one of those we've got to wait and see. But from what we're hearing, I mean, the real EFL reported it on their news article site. They're hearing that the talks for McSheffrey's future have resumed. I, I spoke about this yesterday in the review against, uh, for Hartlepool. They the, the talks have potentially resumed over McSheffrey's future, and to. Tomorrow could be the turning point. Tomorrow could be the turning point if we lose in a manner that deserves the sack. Which, like I said, do I think he deserves it? It's a bit tight considering that it's his first full senior job. But at the end of the day, like I said, on the other hand, football's a results-based business. You've got to take the bumps with it. If it doesn't work out, it's one of them. If it happens, it happens, as Brick Sheffrey would say. Um, and we'll just see. We'll just see. But, uh, no, I really want me... You know, I'm not one of these that's going to come out on social media and say, I hope we lose just to sack the manager. I'm not one of them at all. I back the team. I see my balls off for 90 minutes every single match. People know if they know me in the stands. I see my balls off for 90 minutes. I back the team throughout the 90 minutes. People know that. People spoke to me, they know that. They see me in the stadium, they know that, home and away. Um, even at home, even at home during the Hartlepool match, didn't stream it, didn't watch it, but I was still doing a couple of chants in my bedroom because I love the club and I still back the club from home if they can't hear me. You know, I might have to use a sound barrier just to make them hear me chanting in my bedroom. But no, I'm being serious. All jokes aside, I'm being serious. I back the team, I seen the balls off in 90 minutes every single game. I'm not one of these is going to come out on social media or come out publicly and say, I hope we lose so I can get McSheffrey sacked. That is not me. That is not my style. I don't roll like that. You know, they see me rolling. You know, catch me riding dirty. I don't roll like that. I roll like this. Let's see where we are. Start of November. We are still in the top 10. We're not too far off the playoffs. If, and this is a big if, and again, we're going back to if, buts and babies here. If, come the new year, we are in the bottom six or bottom eight, we are six points or so off the playoffs, and we're seeing the defeats get worse and worse and the style of play doesn't come through, then I'll start saying to the club, hang on a second, let's start looking at the bigger picture here, what could happen and what's the best decision going forward. Because that's what the club needs to be doing. The, the club needs to be, and with the new football structure as well, Coppinger as the head of football operations need to look at the situation, no matter what the outcome tomorrow, and think what's the biggest, what's the, what's the best bigger picture long term going forward. If we win on Saturday, McSheffrey builds on that. Do we trust McSheffrey to build on that? I think the board will, I think Coppinger will. If we lose on Saturday, either by a very high margin or the manner of defeat makes it looks like a makes it look like a five six seven nil loss, but it's only two or three. Do they look at that and think maybe it is time? And again, football's a results based business. It's like with Wellins. If people watch the videos over the last six months, you've heard me say about Wellins. He's still got to rip this squad apart. He's still got to he's, you know he's building a brand new squad. He's still got to have time. I, I don't forget, I did say in the Burton defeat that maybe we should be looking at change, but in the back of my head, I was still like, you know what? Still, still, I don't think, I don't think Wellens was back properly. And do you want me to be brutally honest? Because, you know, the club might see these videos, but to be honest with you, I'll be as, I'll be as constructively honest as possible. I don't think Wellens was backed good enough last year. We brought Tommy Rowe back, amazing. We brought Ben Close in, great signing. But, and, and look, this is no offence to the players that I'm about to name. Tiago Chuka, Jordi Awula, Joe Dudu. 
Again, no offence to Thiago, to Jordi or Joe. But they were not players that Wellens wanted. I believe, personally, they were Graham Younger signings. I believe they were the recruitment signings, but not the signings that Wellens wanted. But that's just my personal belief. I don't believe players like that are what he wanted. Um... Sheffrey, on the other hand, he was backed. He was given back in this summer. Let's not shy away from it. We spent, mon we spent money on players, for God's sake. We spent a bit of money here and there for undisclosed fees on Kyle Hurst and Adam Long. So we have backed the manager. We, we have backed the manager. We've brought in some good players. Kyle Hurst has been great so far. He's had his iffy moments in the past couple of weeks. But apart from that, he's been outstanding. I still think he's a quality player. We can get the best out of him. Um... I think, obviously, Mitchell in January was, you know, he's proven to be a good goalkeeper. Most of the stuff isn't always his fault. Yes, he still needs work to do. There is the odd mistake here and there. And the distribution still needs some work. But I think Mitchell has come in and done a decent job so far. I think Clayton has brought that experience from the higher levels. Yes, he might not have the legs anymore. But I'll tell you something now, he's got experience. And he will. he's a leader. And you can tell that from the way the players speak about Adam. Um, you know, George Miller, 6 in 12, can it be better? Of course it could, but I'm still happy about George. I think he's still good, and I'm hopeful he's, um, you know, fit for, sat fit for tomorrow. I'm hoping he's not touch and go anymore. I hope he's 100% ready for tomorrow, if he does start. Um, if McSheffrey goes one up front and decides to go 4-2-3-1 again, though, if we start the lineup with 4-2-3-1 tomorrow, I will be absolutely on one tomorrow afternoon i will really be on one because one up front on his own isolated as a target man from route one does not work with the players we have mcsheffrey it does not work when you're playing one up front you have them running off the shoulder you play the ball on the ground you play the killer passes those tenacious passes through the smallest of gaps and you look for the vision and you look for the run off the shoulder stay on side that's the best way to play one up front with that pressing forward making the advanced runs off the shoulder with the killer pass from your midfielders and your wingers as well that might either whip it in or cut inside when you play one up front isolate him and expect him to win headers 99 percent of the time when we win about 0.5 percent of the headers all the time it does not work it does not work if he does that if he starts that line up with one up front as an isolated target man on, when the lineups come out at 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, mate, we could be in for a long afternoon. So, we've got to play the best formation, which for me is 4 4 2. Two press type forwards, or you have a pressing forward and you have that defensive forward as your sort of anchor behind, as your hold up play focus to work with. And you have the wingers, you utilise the wing play, you don't just go route one up top, you don't just go through the middle and hoof it long, you, you play it along the ground, you, you find the space, you build it up, you don't pass it, you, you rarely pass it back. If we need to pass it out from the back for the build up play, good, but you don't pass it back unless you really, really have to, 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 to calm the pressure down and control the game. But you utilise the wing play, you only get it in when you need to, when you know someone's going to run onto it. You make sure someone's there at the right place at the right time. You cut out the individual errors and you absolutely play the way we know we can play with this team. And that is a formation and a style of play that I've seen in spells at times that can be attractive, that can be utilised to its best of its ability and we can get chances from it because if we start one up front isolate him play route one all the time Leighton Orange is going to nip the ball back every single time play the 4-3-3 they're going to play the way they play all, uh, all season and they're just going to cut, cut us like a knife through hot butter they are going to cut us like one of the traps from Saw it's going to be a nice clean cut with the saw blade attached to the monitor and you have six seconds to get out of the room otherwise you die make your choice i want to play a game you know and and if we it could be a game it could be literally a game of mousetrap for Leighton orient tomorrow if we don't turn up it'll be a game of mousetrap and we're stuck inside the trap waiting for the sharks to bite us on the backside it is literally waiting in the shark tank for the kill if we don't play the way that we need to play tomorrow which is making sure we go for it and don't be afraid don't sit deep 
don't attract the pressure, don't drag Leighton Orient into a defensive battle because they will beat us at the moment. In a defensive battle with the attackers they've got, they will beat us at the moment. So we've got to play the way I know we can play, otherwise we could be in for a long afternoon. But let's go into my uh, predicted lineup. Like I said, I've gone with the 4-4-2. As I said earlier, I think I, I think Noel and um, I, I think Noel will start. But I don't think Miller will. And, I, and that's me being brutally honest. So I've gone with Mitchell in goal. I've gone with Maxwell, Faulkner, Williams and Noel. Probably the best back four we can go with. And I've seen the reports, by the way, of the interest in Bobby Faulkner. If if Bobby Faulkner, like I said in the review on Artlepool yesterday, if he leaves for Beanos to, the, to, to a Prem club or whatever in January, I'm going to be so, so angry. But kind of not because we've done this before with other players. Um, Hurst, Clayton, Close and Molyneux in that midfield. Clayton and Close, that midfield pairing. Molyneux and Hurst either side, utilise the wing play, play the best they can. And then Agard and Griffiths, and that's only because I don't think Miller will start. I think Miller will be the one that rests on the bench. Um, also, I want to see Max Waltman given a chance. I, I, I would have predicted Waltman to start, but because he's not being utilised... You can't start someone who's not been utilised because they're not match ready. So we've got to bring Waltman on at some point if it's not working. Let it just watch what that kid could do for a half an hour, 35 minutes, and just see what that kid could do if it's not working. Just see what he can do. And I'd have Agard as the sort of experienced, advanced forward working with Rio, who's, the, who's better at the hold-up play. But has a shot himself. Rio can get some good shots off. So... Um, You've got to play two up front. You can't play one up front uh, against top of the league. We just get annihilated. Um, score prediction. I'm going to be optimistic, but I'm also going to be realistic. So I will take, and this is in terms of what I will take, I will take a 1-1 draw in this game. I'm going to go with a 1-1 draw, but I don't think it will be a 1-1 draw. But that's only me saying what I'd take out of that game with, with the form we're on and the form that Leighton Orient's on over the last few. You know... I, I, I would probably bet letting Orient to win this one. But I'm going to go with the 1-1 draw. Stay optimistic and just see what happens. But that is going to be it for this video, guys. Make sure you do like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, and for now, guys, I am the C-H-A-L-L. Your Dong Strowers fan, your sporting journalist, and the media manager for the ever-growing, ever-ambitious Sheffield City Football Club. Keep living the Rovers life. And that is full-time. Rovers side die. Thank you very much. And I'll see you at the Ecopath for vlogs, for fan cam, and uh, also for uh, the review the day after as well. Take care, guys. Ciao for now.